You're listening to episode 26 of Burning Brightly, Why Business. This is Burning Brightly, a podcast for Christian moms who are feeling called to build a business and share their light with the world. I'm Bonnie Wiscombe, a life coach, mom, and entrepreneur, and I'm honored to be your guide as you face this business building adventure full of highs, lows, and everything in between. This is where we help each other find the courage to shine. Welcome back, friends. Today, we're going to dive into why business, meaning why are we building businesses out of all the things that we could be doing with our extra time that we're carving out from our families, from our responsibilities within our community? Why in particular am I talking about business versus a million other things? Well, I named this podcast Burning Brightly because I want to inspire women of faith to make themselves more visible in the world and specifically to shine God's light. And one way to do this is to build a business. Now, it's not the only way, obviously. We can volunteer in our communities, which I'm sure many of you already do. We can fight for justice and freedom and awesome values. We can run for public office, which is amazing for some people and would be a terrible idea for me, but I'm glad some people like to do it. We can start a nonprofit. We can foster a child. We can do so many things that put goodness into the world. So starting a business is just one of them. But on this podcast, I only talk about that one. So why? Well, because businesses make the world go round. I think they are amazing, so incredible. I was not exposed to a lot of entrepreneurial examples as a kid. Maybe you haven't been either. So because of that, you might still think of business as this big, massive kind of corporate entity that would just offer you a job and products that you need isn't necessarily doing much good in the world. But I want to reframe how you think and feel about businesses today so that we can put our efforts into building our own and know that it is going to put the good that the world needs out there. So let's redefine business for a second. A business is simply an organized means of exchanging value. That's it. It's just a way to exchange value, but it's organized so that there are particular steps someone goes through to get the value that you offer. A business is usually created when one person or a group of people see a need, i.e. a demand, and they know how to create a solution, i.e. a supply. So they see that somebody needs something and they know how to create that solution. When they organize themselves to meet this demand, then that's a business. So it could start with one person offering lemonade on the corner. And then once they organize themselves into a legal entity and they start doing things on a massive scale, then it becomes a business and they're then selling their lemonade to larger amounts of people, hopefully. So that's one very simple example of a business. A couple of other examples of small businesses could be a plumber that knows that people need good, honest, reliable service and he knows how to give it. Awesome. New business. What about a seamstress who loves to sew and wants to help people with alterations that nobody ever seems to know how to do for themselves anymore? She sees a need, she can supply a solution. Or a piano teacher who is great at inspiring kids and happens to know that our community is full of such kids and parents who really want their kids to learn an instrument. Great. A need, a solution. Okay? That's all a business is. One person or group creates the value and exchanges it in the form of money of the country's currency to someone who really wants or needs it. You guys, we engage with businesses all day long. Stop and think about it for a second. It's fascinating. Sometimes minute by minute, we're engaging with a new business. Right now, let's just talk about what I'm doing right now. Right now, I'm using my computer brought to me by Cox, who gives me my internet, and Apple, who created my laptop. I'm also wearing clothes, thanks to, let's see, Free People and Target, I think, two more businesses. You are listening to my podcast via my hosting platform and whatever phone you're using, that brand, and your phone company that you pay for. We are comfortable in our homes thanks to air conditioning or heat companies and realtors, builders, right? So many businesses come together to offer us the things that we need. If you're listening to your car, think about all the people that come together to create an awesome car. All of the parts that go into it, sometimes created by various different companies, the oil companies that create the gasoline that we need to get from one place to another. It is just amazing when you start to think about it. So many businesses are required for you and I to just go about our daily lives and live comfortably. This is the miracle of the industrial revolution. We live in amazing and amazing time. So before you brush off business as something that's not for you or something kind of cold and faceless, think about all these people that started with just one person or just a handful of small people and then decided to offer something of value to those who needed it. So basically what I'm trying to do here is to help anyone who has negative associations with the word business to understand it in the simplest way possible. It is just an organized way to exchange value. So can we survive in our day-to-day without businesses? Of course. People did it for thousands of years. 
But life is a lot harder. We actually really need each other to survive and to thrive, especially in our modern days where we have so many resources to do amazing things like put out podcasts. Thousands of years ago, people had to create a lot more tools and resources than we do now. They had to rely on themselves for almost everything. If they wanted milk, then they had to own the cow and know how to milk it. If they wanted clothes, they needed sheep and then they had to process the wool and make it into fabric and sew it together. It was a much bigger deal to get these basic human needs that we fulfill just by driving down to Target. Humanity then progressed from creating our own things to bartering. Maybe the dairy farmer would swap the milk for the wool from the sheep farmer. But access to our wants and needs was still very, very limited. Now we have access and almost instantaneous access sometimes to literally anything we can dream of. Really, money is the only barrier. All we need is money, and we can get that thousands of different ways. Think about all the different ways you know that people make money through their jobs or their businesses or any, you know, selling things on the internet, a million different things. It is so fascinating. So I personally have never milked a cow in my lifetime, but I enjoy ice cream all the time. Isn't that a miracle? I've never built a car. I've seen one built. It's pretty fascinating, but I can get to drive everywhere because somebody else did that hard work for me. Also never designed a computer. See me inside. Looks like gobbledygook to me, but I use one every single day, thankfully, for other geniuses who put their time and effort into their business to create the computers that we use every day. So I think we now know just how vital and just how important businesses are. But let's move on to the next step. Why is it important for you and I to create or build one of these organizations that exchanges value? Well, because you and I are full of value. Do you believe that? Do you truly believe that you have value to give the world? If not, then we need to have a conversation, preferably on a coaching call where I can help you parse out some of those thoughts that are not serving you. But I firmly believe that every human being on this planet is full of value that they can give to other people. We know how to love people and teach them and inspire them and encourage them wherever we go. And some of us are more practiced than others, but the world has need of what we have to give. Especially, I believe, God's faithful women are so powerful, and I believe that he's calling us to step into that power and to show it to the rest of the world. Sadly, the modern society that we live in has caused a lot of physical disconnect with friends, family, even strangers that previous generations didn't have. In order to barter those goods, they had to walk down the street and talk to their neighbor. They had to go to a farmer's market. We don't need to do that. We can literally live inside of our house with almost zero human interaction. It's very sad. I mean, it's great for those of us who are introverts, but do you guys remember the movie The Net with Sandra Bullock from the 90s? Back then it seemed like science fiction where a woman could live in her house and not know anyone physically and no one could vouch for her identity because so few people knew her in real life. And that is our reality today. You can DoorDash everything. You can Amazon Prime everything and have so little human interaction. So I think that we really need to take advantage of the internet that we have in order to create more connection, not less. So the upside to having access to the internet is that now we have access to the entire world. I can put out a podcast that a woman finds inspiring in Japan or in Australia. And those women can put value out into the world that could benefit me all the way in Arizona. It's so amazing and I love it. But there are pros and cons, of course, as we see this physical disconnect, but then we can reach people further on the internet. So can you see why God might be calling you to do this? It's because he needs your talents and skills put out into the world and on the internet where thousands upon thousands of people can benefit from them. Now, don't get freaked out by the thousands and thousands. We're going to start with just a handful. Thankfully, it takes time to build an audience. I say thankfully because most of the time it's really nerve wracking to get on the internet the first couple of times and building an online business is full of scary moments like that. But it's going to take time for more than, you know, just your friends and family to follow you and and see what you're putting out into the world. So once you get confident, then you can go reach the thousands and uh, it won't feel quite so scary. All right, so we've established why businesses are not mean, nasty corporate entities, necessarily, maybe some are, that they are valuable organizations that exchange value, and why we might need to start a business to put our own value into the world. But I know what some of you might be thinking now, okay, you get it, but why charge money for this value? If it is such great value and God wants us to put it onto the world, why not just volunteer or create a nonprofit? Of course you can volunteer. Of course you can create a nonprofit. I highly recommend you do, especially if you feel called to it. But there are two main reasons why charging for your knowledge, expertise, or your creativity is worthwhile. So hear me out. The first one is that you deserve to be paid. Okay, so putting goodness out into the world is hard work. And in order for it to be sustainable, meaning last more than about two months, value needs to change hands, meaning you need to receive money for what you're putting out there. 
not only do you deserve it, but it actually costs money to disseminate information, content, products to the world. So your business can only be viable while money is changing hands. Now you could make it super cheap, but wait for number two and you'll you'll learn why you might not want to do that. So essentially, you can only put goodness out into the world until the money runs out, until you don't have money to pay for your hosting platform or your website. Okay, so that money has to change hands to make it worth your while and also to continue putting it out there. The second main reason why charging is essential is because people value things more when we pay for them. Tell me you don't think this is true. It is absolutely true. We all know this is true. When I have access to something free, I'm either super suspicious and I don't take advantage of it. I'm like, why is it free, right? Or I just don't value it at all. When we charge people money, first it shows them that what we are offering is valuable and it communicates how valuable. So a Gucci purse is more valuable than a purse from Target for multiple reasons, but not the least of which is cost. It's about 500 times more expensive. Ergo, it is 500 times more valuable. Now people can argue whether it's actually higher quality. That's not what we're talking about here. What we want to understand is that the money tied to a particular item, service, piece of information shows the world how valuable it is. And then also, of course, charging money communicates to the person receiving the item or the information that they should take it more seriously. The things that I own that have cost me a lot of money are treasured and cared for way more than the things that I got for free. Not only do I not care for the free or the cheap things as much, I don't spend as much time or energy enjoying them. I figure since it was only $5 or $25 or whatever, I only have to enjoy it $5 or $25 worth. If I invested $100 or $200 or $1,000 in something, I know that it is more valuable and I spend more time and effort enjoying it or getting that amount of value out of it. So when I invest serious money into something, it reminds me that it's worth having in my life and I allow it to take up more space in my life or in my brain. I just know it's more valuable. So unfortunately, way too many female entrepreneurs worry about charging money for their products or services, especially large sums of money. And they worry that it's not Christ-like or something because they're focusing on bringing in money. But do you see how undercharging could also be really terrible? not just for you and your business, but for your customers or your clients. When you undercharge, you diminish the value you are bringing to the table and you're effectively communicating that your product, service, whatever you're offering is not valuable. So you might be thinking, well, I'm only gonna charge 15 or $20 for this thing because I want it to be affordable or accessible. But when people see a price tag of 15 or $20, you know what they're thinking? This is cheap. This is not valuable. It's not certainly not as valuable as that thing over there that's $250, okay? So keep in mind both sides of the equation. You have to require people to pay you a high value so that you are communicating the value of your product or offer. Don't forget that because you don't wanna cheapen your business. You don't wanna cheapen your experience, make your business not viable. You also don't wanna cheapen the experience you're giving to your customers or clients. Now, I'm also not a fan of overcharging for no reason just because you can. We do want our services to be accessible. We do want people to benefit from the value we're putting out into the world, but not at the expense of us or them. And we can do so by charging a fair price. So if you believe that you can help people change their lives, which I believe you can, communicate that by charging the amount that that transformation is worth. Not your time, not the energy required to produce that offer, but what the transformation you are selling is worth. That will make all the difference. I firmly believe that as more amazing women organize these businesses and start creating more value and then exchanging them for value in their life, everyone's lives are blessed and the world becomes a better place. So let's get out there and build those businesses. I'll talk to you next week, friends. Are you ready to get started on your dream business? Join Finding Your Side Hustle, my digital course that will guide you through discovering what it is you love and how to turn it into a family-friendly business. Are you ready for one-on-one support as a mom or entrepreneur? Schedule a free coaching call with me to work on the goals you have for your life, including business success, weight loss, or better relationships. I can't wait to help you make progress on your dreams.